In the early years of Battle Mix, the Capellan Confederation had a limited arsenal, relying heavily on a single model, the Wham B. This 25 ton light mech was equipped with a single LRM 5 launcher and three SRM 2s, designed primarily for a support role on the battlefield. While the Wham B could provide effective fire support, its light armor and modest firepower met its struggle with direct combat, particularly against heavier and more robust opponents. Recognizing the limitations of the Wan B, the Capellan Confederation's regent at the time, Edmund Salandar, took decisive action. He tasked Earthworks Limited, a prominent manufacturer, with the creation of a new heavier battle mech. However, this task came with significant challenges. The Capellan branch of Earthworks did not have access to the advanced battle mech plans from their main branch on Terra due to multiple exclusivity agreements. As a result, they were forced to design a new mech entirely from scratch. The only other Capellan based company with experience about mech construction was the Confederation Defense Company. Unfortunately, they offered little assistance, likely not wanting to aid a potential competitor in the market. This left Earthworks with no choice but to rely heavily on the best local engineers from Tikhonov to spearhead the project. With these constraints in mind, Earthworks embarked on the ambitious task of creating a new formidable battle mech. The result of their efforts was the Koshe, named after an ancient Slavic demon known for his resilience and immortality. This new mech was designed to address the weaknesses of the Wan B. The Koshe represented a significant step forward for the Capellan Battle Mech Arsenal, incorporating heavier armor and more powerful weaponry to ensure it could hold its own in direct combat. This development marked the beginning of a new era for the Confederation's military capabilities as they sought to close the gap with their rivals and secure the position on the battlefields of the future. Now the Koshe is an odd looking one. The left arm is where the primary weapon is located and from the only canon picture of it, this is the only picture we have, there's no like new 3D model version of it like uh, some mechs got. The primary weapon looks like a gigantic barrel of a gun. The rest of the body looks pretty standard but it's pretty skinny looking for a heavy mech. Probably because of the reason we'll go through it a bit. The head is also skinny. It's got a collar design going around the neck there. I feel like that is where the pilot sits because the rest of the head looks pretty cramped. It's got a pretty big windshield for her lack of a better term, which is probably the reason why this mech has a weak head armor quirk. But this is somewhat offset by the improved life support quirk. The mech itself is a 65 ton mech that is built upon the Earthworks KSC chassis and can go up to 86 kilometers per hour. This is achievable the Vox 325 engine. It is covered in 12 tons of Maximilian 40 standard armor and the standard armaments are the Imperator B AC-10 and two Magnar Mark II medium lasers. Communications is facilitated with the Neil 2000 and targeting with the RCA InstaTrack Mark IV. The mech comes with 10 single heat sinks. The first production variant is a KSC-3i, introduced in 2504. I would guess that the first and second variants are prototypes, or they just don't exist yet. The Warhammer's variants of small numbers added later on. Maybe they could do that with this? Who knows? But anyway, the first variant comes with the previously mentioned AC-10 on the left arm of 20 shots, and two mediums on the right torso. The original cost 5.9 million. The improved version, the KSC-3L, debuted 130 years later in 2604. This one is refitted to a more long-range role. The AC-10 was replaced with an LRM-15 launcher of 16 shots and a large laser replaced one of the mediums. An extra heat sink is installed to help the extra heat generated from the bigger laser. The improved variant costs 6.1 million. Then, 85 years later, in 2719, the 4i was made. The chassis was changed to an endo steel one and the heat sinks were upgraded to 10 doubles. The armor is also upgraded with 15.5 tons of ferrofibrous. The left arm comes with an LBX-10 with 10 slugs and 10 cluster shots stored in case in the left torso. On each side of the torso, a medium pulse and a normal laser is installed. The new model costs 7 million. The KSC-4L serves as the direct upgrade of the 3L, introduced in 2723 it uses the 4i as its base model. The left arm is equipped with an Artemis equipped LRM-15 with 16 shots inside case in the left torso. Both large and medium on the right torso are replaced with pulse models. This model also costs 7 million. 300 years later, our friends, the Canopians, introduced a new generation. 
Their Majesty Metals and Manufacturing kept the endosteel chassis, but the engine is not an XL model. They also reduced the cockpit size to a small one. The free weight of the XL model allows installation of 14 double heat sinks and 12.5 tons of light ferrofibrous armor that covers the mech. Their primary weapon is a rotary AC5 with 60 shots stored in case in the left torso. An array of five small ERs is also on the left torso. A snub nose PPC is installed on the right torso and a large laser is on the right arm. All this and you still get 86 km per hour. This thing is wild. The price has now doubled to $14.3 About three years later, the original creators, Earthworks, introduced their own 5 Series model, the KSC-5i. They retained the 12.5 tons of light ferrofibrous, but instead of reducing the compact size, they switched the gyro for a compact one. They also removed one of the heatsink. With the free space, they installed 5 jump jets to improve the mobility of the already high mobility mech. The rotary cannon is now a heavy PPC. The array of ER smalls is still there on the right torso and snub nose PPC is housed in the right torso. The 5i also comes with Guardian ECM in the center torso. This one will also cost you 16.7 million. Again, all this and you get 86 kilometers. Those Tikhanovan scientists, man, there's something else, aren't they? <laughs> In 3075, work on the KSC-5X began. It is based on the 5i but with two heat sinks removed. The left arm is now an actual arm and is mounted with claws. The same goes for the right arm. For range weapons, it's got a large pulse on the right torso, two ER mediums on the left torso and a single medium pulse in the middle. This one's apparently meant for urban fighting. The 5X costs 16.3 million. And finally, we have the latest generation, the KSC-6L. Created by our friends the Canopians again! Yes! The 6L comes with an endosteel chassis and a light model of the 325 engine. But with the triple strength Mimir activated, it can go up to 97 km per hour. It has 12 double heat sinks and 11.5 tons of light ferrofibrous. The 6L comes with a sniper cannon on the left arm, with 20 shots stored in K2 and K-Stun right torso. Now, a sniper cannon isn't like a like a big sniper, not like a bear 50 cal, like a mech size bear 50 cal, no, 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 no. You know that Russian 155mm gun? Basically that. The sniper cannon is an artillery piece. It's not a gun. Well, it is a gun, but no, it's not like a, like a direct fire gun, it's an indirect fire gun. If I'm not mistaken, in game, when you shoot something, you don't actually do damage, direct damage to it, you, you do like area of effect damage if not mistaken but anyway the cannon is aided by a targeting computer in the head for personal defense the 6l comes with four medium lasers on the right torso the latest model costs 13.4 million there's only a handful of pilots three to be exact three that i could find at least <laughs> captain jaina vakariu piloted the very first 5mc koshe when her commander rejected it she had a very big fight with a blake seraph both her crochet and the seraph were barely functional by the end of the fight, where she got behind it and blasted it with her PPC. Lieutenant Christopher Knight Jr. bought his Cochet 5i using his father's life insurance payout. A former NAIS student, technician or scientist, I'm not entirely sure which one, it could be either three. <laughs> Knight joined the one i Jax mercenary unit, where they gladly accepted his service due to his expertise of energy weapons. Sub-Commander Benson Chung was a member of the 15th Sea Dragoons. He became a poster boy for fighting the Federated Sons after destroying at least a dozen of battle axes. But he ultimately died during the Unification War, in which the Torians got him good. In the first century of the Koshe's life, it proved to be a highly effective battle mech. The Capellan Confederation assigned it to their best units, showcasing its importance. However, as time passed and newer, more advanced models were introduced, the Koshe's effectiveness began to wane. This decline in his battlefield dominance led to the end of his first production run in 2714. Earthworks Limited sought to revive the Koshe of the introduction of the 4i model. Despite being a clear upgrade over the previous three series, the 4i did not meet the expectations of the Capellan Confederation Armed Forces. It was considered inadequate for friendly service and its numbers steadily dwindled throughout the Secession Wars. During the FATCOM Civil War, when the Capellan Confederation successfully liberated Tikhonov, 
Earthworx introduced the five series of the Koshe. However, this period coincided with the rise of the Xingsheng movement, spearheaded by Chancellor Sun Tzu Lao. This movement emphasized the revival and promotion of Han Chinese culture, which was integral to the Lao family's identity. The Slavic cultural roots of the Koshe did not align with the Xingsheng movement's focus, leading to a lack of enthusiasm from the CCAF for the Five Series. The Koshe, with its Slavic heritage, struggled to gain traction within the Capella military during this cultural shift. Despite this, Earthworks found a silver lining as the Koshe achieved success in the mercenary market, allowing the company to continue production of the Bell Mac. Now, I have limited experience with this thing. I had one. I think it was the sixth one, the one with the big gun, the sniper cannon, in my Capellan military uh, Mac HQ campaign. It was piloted by the leader of the second lance, if I'm mistaken. She died. And then I renamed the Mac after her. And then I've just kept the Mac in cold storage ever since. <laughs> it's still there and it hasn't been touched. I have no idea why I kept it. I probably could sell it, but it's there. Maybe she was a good pilot or something. I don't know. It's been like she died like years ago. Like this campaign. I can't continue it. But like she died years ago. Real life years, not campaign years. But I tell you what though. Looking through the variants. This thing is basically the original Legionnaire. And arguably better. You get the same speed. Slightly more armor. But hell of a lot more firepower. This thing is wild. Maybe I'll reactivate her mech and give it to the current leader of Second Lance or something if I continue the campaign again. But that's been that. A short, sweet one. Hope. This was a, an emergency video. The uh, faction overview video is a lot more tedious and full of work than expected. It's less about editing the video itself. I mean, the editing is a lot more significant uh, compared to this one, I guess. Compared to the mech overviews. It's more about finding resources that I can use to represent information in the video. Like, it really opens your eyes at the lack of, I guess, art for things that aren't Bellmax in this universe. Like, if you look up Bellmax, Belltech art, it's only mech fighting. Maybe you'll get infantry scattered here and there, but mostly you get the, the, the big mechs, the popular mechs fighting, that's it. Also, I've been half called out for using AI art. I fully expected that to happen one day. <laughs> it was inevitable, <laughs> considering how uh, divisive and uh, controversial AI art is. I'm gonna try to reduce it as much as I can. Right? I'll use and credit uh, images that are, that, that are human made for to destroy myself. But again, that's been that. Hopefully, the faction video will be done next week. Also, I chose this mic for a reason. It's uh, it's related to the faction I'll go through. Not really, but kind of. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, got Twitch and Discord. Got those. Come on in if you want to. Help me there as well, Twitch. I'm almost 100, I think. Am I? Probably 100 by the time this goes up. Who knows? Anyway, take care. And till next time, next week, hopefully. Mm, take care. See ya.